I hope you are having a great day in the life. For today's episode, I wanted to talk about something that I've had on my mind a lot lately. Now, out in the field, you guys hear me talk about metal detectors a lot, and most often it is the negatives of metal detectors. Um, usually I have a problem with a detector in the field, and I will gripe to no end about it. But today, I wanted to talk about the best metal detector in the world. And while I'm at it, I will talk about the worst metal detector in the world. So, with that said, let's get into the world's best metal detector. Now, before anyone freaks out on me, I want to say that I'm speaking in a broad sense about the best metal detector in the world. I use several metal detectors when I'm out metal detecting. I have, I think, six metal detectors. Typically, I choose whatever metal detector is right for the environment I'm in. If I'm going to be hunting in the water, of course, I'm going to have a Garrett AT. If I'm hunting in hot soil, I'm going to use a pulse induction machine. If I'm hunting in sand, I'm going to use my Nautilus. And I personally prefer the Nautilus DMC-2BA over any other machine in the world. But if I could only have one metal detector for the rest of my life, it would be one of the Garrett AT series. Now this is the best selling metal detector in the world and with good reason. It has a low price point which is very helpful if you are looking to buy a machine. Just about anybody can afford one of these with a little bit of saving. Another great thing about this machine is it is waterproof. That goes a long way if you're ever hunting out on a day when it's a little bit rainy or if it's pouring rain or if you want to get into the creeks and hunt like I do in the summertime, you have to have a waterproof machine. So that is a huge bonus for this machine. It's a very light machine weight wise. I think just about anybody could swing this machine from kids to adults. Um, and it won't wear your arm out in a long day of swinging, although I feel it's a little unbalanced with the larger coil. It's also a turn on and go machine. If you turned this machine on and handed it to a beginner metal detectorist, you could explain to them in about one minute what to do with this machine, what to dig, what not to dig, and it's very intuitive for the user. I prefer to use it in Pro Zero mode. That is how you will get the most out of this machine. But there is a beginner mode that you could turn on and hand to any child or beginner and they would learn to metal detect really quickly and be digging some good targets. The other great thing about this machine is it loves iron. If you are looking for Civil War artillery or iron Civil War artifacts, this machine really loves digging iron. That is not a bad thing. That's a good thing. As for other targets in the field, this machine achieves pretty moderate depth and what I would call an acceptable depth for a VLF machine. It's not going to dig deeper than a pulse induction machine or some of the high-end VLF machines, but it does give an acceptable depth for a VLF machine. Well, those are the reasons that I would say that the Garrett AT series is the best metal detector in the world. There are some other contenders out there, such as the White's XLT series, I believe it is, and I have not had a chance to get my hands on one of those yet to really make a comment on it, but for my money, this is the best metal detector in the world. Let's move on to the worst metal detector in the world. It's the same machine. Now, for a lot of reasons, I feel this is an excellent machine, and a lot of times in the field, I'm griping about a machine, and I don't want to make anyone feel bad about a machine ever, and I gripe about this machine a lot. The reason being, these are notoriously unreliable machines. Take this with a grain of salt, because I use these machines more than the average user. I metal detect almost every day if I can, and I put a lot of wear and tear on these machines. With that said, I've had this machine two years and have sent the body of the machine back to Garrett five times and I've replaced six coils. That's pretty rough. For a little comparison, this Nautilus metal detector is nearly 20 years old and has been sent back to the factory for repairs 
zero times. It still is my baby. There's nothing worse than being in the field or maybe a mile down a river and having a problem with your machine that you've already had several times and sent back to have repaired. It's just really frustrating to keep having the same problem and I think if they would take some of the money that they've made off of the millions of these that they've sold and put it into producing a higher quality product, they wouldn't have so many problems and maybe it would not rank as the worst metal detector in the world. A lot of people have had issues with the arm cuff breaking. It doesn't have a backlight, which is an issue for a lot of other people and it actually is rather difficult to see the numbers on this screen. A lot of the issues people have with these machines are user error. Either they have not tightened down these waterproof seals tightly enough and they've gotten in the water and the machine has actually taken on water, or they've not used a coil cover with the machine, or they have not reset the machine. There's any number of issues that you could have with these machines. Rest assured, I use metal detectors nearly every day and I know all of the common symptoms of a problem with these machines. The biggest problem I've had with these machines is coil failure. Um, I've replaced six coils now and I have had a few issues with the box itself where it actually quit on me and right now it's having an issue where it always sounds like there's interference, like electrical interference going on even though there isn't. With that said, I believe this to be the best and worst metal detector in the world. Well, I hope you guys had a great day in the life, and I hope I don't make anybody too mad with this little op-ed piece today. But it's just something I wanted to cover. I know I talk bad about these machines a lot, and I didn't want anyone to think that these weren't great machines, and I didn't want anyone to think that they're the best machine in the world either. So, hope you have a great day. Go on detecting with a friend in the morning. See you tomorrow.